In Module 3, we'll focus on differentiating two specific types of functions, exponential functions and log functions. It'll also give us the opportunity to practice the three rules we covered in Module 2. There's nothing simpler than the derivative of a natural exponential function, f of x is equal to e to the x, f prime x, the first derivative, is also equal to e to the x. That means the value of the slope is the same as the value of the function at any point. While the first derivative is very simple, we usually come across it in combinations with other functions. Here we have a couple of examples. One's a product, the other a quotient. We'll go through those. Here we have fx equals x to the 5 times e to the x. So we'll use the product rule. That is, well, we'll have f of x is equal to, we'll have two functions, uh, g of x times h prime x plus g prime x times h of x. And we'll let g of x equal x to the 5, it implies g prime x is equal to 5 times x to the 4. And we'll let h of x equal e to the x, and that implies h prime x is also equal to e to the x. Then we'll have f prime x is equal to g of x, so x to the 5, times h prime x, so e to the x, plus g prime x, 5 times x to the 4, times e to the x. We can factorise that e to the x times x to the 5 plus 5 times x to the 4. Our next example uh, uses the quotient rule. Recall f prime x is equal to uh, g prime x times h x minus g of x times h prime x over h of x all squared. We'll let g of x equal e to the x, the numerator, it implies that uh, g prime x is equal to e to the x, and h of x is equal to, well, x, and so h prime x is equal to 1. Substituting those values into our formula, we'll have well, g prime x is equal to e to the x times hx will be x times x minus g of x, again e to the x times h prime x will be 1 over h of x squared, which will be x squared. We can factorise that and simplify. We should always try to do that. So we'll have e to the x times x minus 1 over x squared. While the natural exponential function is quite simple, we often have the case where we have the exponent is itself a function. So we have a function of a function. We'll have f of x is equal to e to the g of x. We can use the chain rule to show that f prime x, the first root of, is equal to e to the g of x times g prime x. We have a couple of examples. We'll use this first example to work through and show uh, how we apply the chain rule to derive the answer from first principles. In the second example, we'll just apply the rule directly. Here we're going to apply the chain rule. We have, uh, we'll let u of x equal minus x. So du dx is equal to minus 1. Well, that implies that that implies that f of x, well, let's call that y, is equal to e to the u. And so dy du is equal to, well, e to the u. f prime x is equal to dy dx. That will equal dy du times du dx, that's e to the u, times minus 1, and that's equal to minus e to the u, 
replace the, the u with the original function, we'll have minus e to the minus x. So we can see there if fx is equal to e to the g of x, then f prime x is equal to e to the g of x times g prime x. Here we have a function that's a little bit more complicated. We could have that as equal to e to the 2x plus x to the half. So here we have a, a function of a function, and then again, another function of a function. So we have a compound function here. For this part, we'll just apply our rule directly, and for the remainder, we'll apply the chain rule. So let's let that equal y. We'll let u equal e to the 2x plus x, and so that implies that y is equal to u to the half. So dy du is equal to a half u to the minus a half. Now finding du dx, well that's equal to, and this is where we apply our rule, we have g of x there, so we'll have g prime x, if 2x is equal to a g of x, then g prime x will just be equal to 2 times e to the 2x. It's the first term plus 1. Then dy dx equal to f prime x will equal dy du times du dx. That's equal to a half u to the minus a half times 2 times e to the 2x plus 1. And so replacing u, we'll have, it's a quotient, we have a minus a half here. So in the numerator, we'll have 2 e to the 2x plus 1. And then the half, that'll be 2 there. Well, let's get it in the same form as we had before with the radical. So it'll be the square root of e to the 2x plus x. We saw in lecture 2 that we can have exponential functions for bases other than e. For example, y equals a to the x. Remember we can convert that to a base e, so that's equal to e to the log ax. Finding the first root of then is just an extension of our last rule. Log a is just a constant. This is equal to uh, e to the log ax times log a, and so we just convert our e to the log a uh, back to base a. When we have a base other than e, first we convert the function to, a, to base e, then proceed as normal, and at the end convert back to our original base. Let's see how that works using a simple example first. Uh, then we'll apply it to something a little bit more complex. f of x is equal to 10 to the minus x. That's equal to e to the log 10 minus x. We need to simplify this just one step further. So we'll have e to the minus log 10 times x. So using a rule here, or using the chain rule, we'll have f prime x is equal to minus log 10 e to the minus log 10 x well that's a minus log 10 e to the log 10 minus x and so that's equal to minus log 10 10 to the minus x, where e to the log 10 is just 10. Here we're going to be using the product rule. We'll let fx equal x, our first term in the product, implies that f prime x is equal to 1. 
we'll call the second term h of x and that's equal to uh, 2 to the 3x and we'll use our new rule here to find h prime x that's equal to e to the log 2 times 3x so we'll have h prime x is well 3 log 2 times 2 to the 3x g prime x is equal to f prime x times h of x plus f of x times h prime x you can substitute in for those values f prime x is equal to 1 times h of x 2 to the 3x plus f of x x times h prime x 3 log 2 2 to the 3 x. So that will equal, we can factorise there, 2 to the 3x times 1 plus 3 times log 2x. The last function we'll consider in this module is the derivative of the natural log function. Once again, the rule itself is quite simple. If f of x is equal to log x, then the first derivative, f prime x, is equal to 1 on x. That's simple to apply when we have simple cases such as this. So that implies that uh, f prime x is equal to, well, 3x squared plus 1 on x. However, we'll often encounter examples where the log functions are elements of products, quotients, or composite functions. We'll work through these two and then look at a composite function. Here we have f of x is equal to x squared plus log x. We'll use the product rule. We'll let g of x equal x squared. g prime x is equal to 2x. We'll let h of x equal log x implies that h prime x is equal to 1 on x. f prime x then is equal to g prime x times h of x plus g of x times h prime x. Substituting in there, we'll have 2x times log x plus g of x, x squared times 1 on x. We simplify that. We have 2x times log x plus, well, x. Now we'll use the quotient rule. We'll let a g of x equal log x. Once again, g prime x is equal to 1 on x, h of x. The denominator will be x, h prime, x is equal to, well, 1. f prime x, then, is equal to g prime x times h of x minus g of x times h prime x over h of x squared. Substituting in for those values, we'll have 1 on x times h of x, x minus g of x log x times 1 over x squared. Just simplifying that, we'll have 1 minus log x over x squared. Our last case is where we have the log of a function, so we have a function of a function and we apply the chain rule. So where fx is equal to the log of gx, then we can apply the chain rule to show that f prime x is equal to g prime x divided by gx. We'll do that in a moment, and then after that we'll look at two examples. We have f of x is equal to the log of g of x. We'll apply the chain rule. First we'll let fx equal to y to get into a familiar form. We'll let u equal g of x. So 
du dx is equal to g prime x, y is equal to the log of u. So dy du is equal to, well, 1 on u. f prime x is equal to dy dx. And that's equal to dy du times du dx. And that will be equal to 1 on u times g prime x. u is equal to gx. So that will be g prime x on g of x. Let's apply that rule directly. So here we have uh, gx is equal to 4 minus x squared. Well, g prime x will equal minus 2x. So we'll have f prime x is equal to g prime x over g of x. That's equal to minus 2x over 4 minus x squared. You might like to check that we get the same result using the chain rule. Our last example is something a little bit more complicated. Let's look at this first term first. We'll call that the log of g of x. And to find g prime x, we'll use the quotient rule. So we'll let g of x equal x to the minus 1 on x plus 1. We can say that g of x is equal to h of x on j of x, so that then g prime x will equal h prime x times j of x minus h of x times j prime x over j of x all squared. Our quotient rule will have h prime x is equal to, well, h of x is equal to x minus 1, so it'll equal to 1, and j prime x, well, j is equal to x plus 1, j prime x will also equal 1. We can substitute into our quotient rule to find g prime x. Expanding and simplifying the numerator will give us x minus x, 0, 1, minus minus 1, that will equal 2 in the numerator over x plus 1 all squared. So now we have a g prime x. We can now substitute back into our original function there. And the ter first term we'll have a g prime x over g, and then we take the first root of, of quarter x. f prime x is equal to g prime x over g, or minus a quarter of, bringing down the numerator, that was 1, x to the 1 minus 1, and so that will equal 2 to the x plus 1 to the minus 2 over g of x, well that was x minus 1 divided by x plus 1 minus a quarter we can simplify this, so that will be 2 in the numerator. This x plus 1 will go up into the numerator. x plus 1 to the minus 2 will go down to the denominator. So we'll have x minus 1 times x plus 1 squared. That will be minus a quarter. We can cancel out the x plus 1s, so that will equal 2 on x minus 1 times x plus 1 minus 1 quarter.